Uh, by Joseph Shasher. He's come all the way from Strasbourg. Thanks a lot. So uh, tonight I'm going to talk about the hidden complexity of Mendeley traits. So this is something we try to bring uh, to light uh, using uh, East uh, genetics. Uh, oh. So uh, basically stating the, the obvious, uh, one of uh, the major challenges today in biology is to explain and look for uh, the genetic causes of uh, phenotypic diversity uh, we can observe in natural population. And, and as you know, uh, the uh, inheritance uh, patterns of uh, traits can be uh, classified as uh, uh, Mendelian or uh, monogenic, where you have a bimodal distribution, and uh, uh, either like that or like complex with a normal distribution. But obviously, while that's really, really uh, useful, I mean, it's an uh, overly simplified version uh, view of, of what we have. And obviously, what you can see is that sometimes when you have a monogenic mutation, you can see incomplete uh, penetrance, uh, meaning that you have individuals, uh, they do have the monogenic mutation, but they don't express the, the, the expected uh, phenotype. And the case, uh, uh, you know this case, which is uh, BRCA1 alleles, uh, which are involved in breast and ovarian cancer. But at the same time, sometimes you, the, the penetrance of the monogenic mutation is 100%. Uh, uh, but you can see a variety of you know, uh, phenotypes in, in, uh, between the individuals. And this is a case of, uh, for example, the type 1 uh, neurofibromatosis. But uh, so what's, and we call that expressivity. So what's behind expressivity and penetrance? Usually we say modifier, but some, most of the time we don't know exactly. And also we don't know exactly the phenotypic effects and the inheritance patterns of you know, monogenic mutation at a, a species uh, uh, level. So uh, what we wanted to do is to look at that using yeast, uh, which is a very powerful model for that, for different reasons. First, uh, we do have access to genetic and phenotypic diversity of more than 1,000 natural isolates. This is in the frame of the 1002 yeast genomes project. And uh, second, we also can uh, easily generate, uh, you know, meiotic offspring and look at the distribution first of the phenotypes. And at the same time, and that's really important, it's a very important point, is that we can also, you know, look at the te segregation by doing tetrad analysis. And that's how we, we, we use the segregation to precisely identify Mendelian traits in East. And finally, once you got a, a monogenic mutation, it's easy to test this mono, monogenic mutation in different backgrounds, I'm, as I, I'm going to show you. So uh, uh, to carry out uh, the identification of Mendelian traits, but also to have a global view of the landscape of trait complexity, what we did is just to have a, uh, a strategy like to cross 41 natural isolates with one strain, which is sigma, a lab strain. So we generated uh, 40 uh, segregants per cross, and in total we got a panel of uh, more than uh, 1,600 uh, segregants. And the next step was to phenotype these segregants in, uh, so we basically by measuring uh, fitness in 30 stress conditions which are related to physi physiological and uh, cellular processes, uh, such as carbon sources, protein stability, and so on. And finally, we got more than 1,100 cross-trait combination. Uh, using this, this data set, what we did is to analyze the fitness distribution first, but also the segregation. And by looking at fitness and segregation, we could have an estimation of the genetic complexity, but also we could identify you know, precisely Mendelian traits having a bimodal distribution, but also a 2 to 2 segregation. So uh, what we found is that uh, uh, around 85% uh, of uh, the cases uh, show uh, high complexity, among which uh, uh, 21 or 
almost 22% uh, prison uh, episodic effect. And uh, obviously, 15% uh, uh, show a low uh, complexity, with 9% nine, 9 uh, having a, a real Mendelian uh, inheritance. So uh, then, uh, as I told you, we focus on the uh, Mendelian cases. So basically, we got you know, uh, 98 cross-trait combinations uh, with a Mendelian inheritance and uh, we wanted to know uh, which locus is involved. So basically here you have all the strains uh, showing a, a Mendelian inheritance with sigma and the different conditions. So we have copper sulfate, uh, uh, sodium chloride, and so on. And we, using a bulk segregant analysis followed by uh, whole genome sequencing, we identified the, the region, which are in regions which are involved. Uh, for the, uh, these conditions, which uh, uh, for copper sulfate, but also uh, uh, sodium chloride, we, we mapped the usual suspect. So that wasn't very exciting because we already know that you know uh, copy number variations are involved in uh, in this uh, kind of Mendelian traits. But so. Uh, uh, what we did is to focus on one rare case which is related to drug resistance and more precisely to cyclohexamide and anisomycin uh, resistance. And we did exactly the same, so meaning pulse segregant analysis followed by um, whole genome sequencing. In this case, we found one region on the chromosome 7 and in these regions, we found the gene PDA1, which is a transcription factor involved in multidrug resistance. And we, uh, by uh, reciprocal hemizygosity, we, we have shown that, in fact, this gene is evolved, involved in, in the phenotype. And we found also the mutation which is involved in the phenotype. Okay, so uh, uh, in terms of function, I mean, that's obvious. Uh, uh, pda one is a transcription factor which will activate pda 5 and pda 5 is, is a transporter, so it's going to expose cyclohexamide, so it's not really uh, surprising and it's, it makes, makes sense. But, I mean, our goal wasn't to focus on the function, but uh, uh, more on the inheritance patterns of, of, of this uh, monogenic mutation. And so what we also did is to look at the distribution in, uh, in a large uh, collection of strains, so in a, in, a, in a population. And in order to do that, we just used the 1,000 natural isolates from the 1,002 uh, genomes project. And uh, here you have two cases, for example, for the copper sulfate. Uh, with a single cross, as, as I have showed you before, we have a bimodal distribution, 2 to 2 segregation. If we look in, in the population, we also have a bimodal distribution. Sin so suggesting that this, this trait is, is, is a strong Mendelian trait, uh, which is linked to copy number vari variation. But by contrast, if we look at cyclohexamide, in this case, we also have a 2 to 2 segregation and a bimodal distribution and 2 to 2 segregation. But if we look at the population level, we can see that we have a, a normal distribution. So meaning that phenotypic effect, uh, uh, we, we, we have phenotypic typic effect uh, within different backgrounds. Oh, that's what we wanted to test it. So in order to test that, what we, we did is just to take the, the, the strains with the monogenic mutation YGM321, uh, and we crossed these resistant strains with uh, different sensitive strains, uh, isolates, different uh, natural isolates, which are uh, genetically as diverse as possible. And after that, we obviously uh, generated uh, segregants. We looked at the fitness, but also at the segregation. And uh, we wanted to look for deviation from uh, uh, Mendelian inheritance. So in order to see the impact of parental combinations, but also uh, in, uh, in the impact of the uh, genetic backgrounds. And when we did that, uh, so in 70% uh, uh, of the cases, we did observe a Mendelian segregation, so bimodal distribution, 2 to 2 segregation. But interestingly, uh, in some cases, we, in 
15 percent of the cases, we've seen, uh, we've seen a, a, a low complexity, and in 10, an intermediate complexity, and finally in 5 percent, we saw uh, high complexity. So meaning that in this case, you have a continuum of the complexity uh, uh, of a, a monogenic mutation, so showing the hidden complexity of a, a, a monogenic mutation. So uh, there are two points here. So uh, if you think about you know, prediction of the phenotype based on, 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 on the genotype, this is a big issue. And uh, the other point I want to mention is that you know, I talk about uh, penetrance and expressivity. Uh, most of the time, these two words are uh, misused. But at the same time, these two words, uh, I mean, the use of these two words makes no sense. Uh, okay, so just to summarize uh, the f this part, so basically what we found is that uh, most cases are complex, 85 percent, and uh, among which 21 percent present potential epistatic effects. Uh, Mendelian cases are rare, I mean the, the estimate is 9 percent. Mendelian traits display uh, uh, hidden complexity, and obviously uh, genetic backgrounds could uh, modify the, the Mendelian inheritance. So um, uh, what we did so in, in this part is, was to cross sigma, so one strain uh, by many, and then we identify uh, one, interesting, one interesting case, and then we cross this, this strain by many, and obviously, the next step we started to do is to cross many by many and to obtain a big, bigger, bigger matrix. Uh, so, so far, what we did is 70 to 70. So we have something like 4,900 hybrids. And out of that, we're going to select 20 by 20. And we're also going to increase you know, the, the number of, of uh, tetrads in order to have a better precise uh, segregation increase the number of conditions also, and so in order to have a better view of the landscape of inheritance, uh, a better uh, view of the inheritance patterns of that. So we plan to have you know, something like 10,800 cross-trade combinations. So uh, I would like to thank uh, two uh, grad students Ying and Anastasi, who did a lot of work uh, in, in this project, but also Theo, who studied the, the, the big matrix. And that's um, collaboration in the frame of an NIH project with my triad NAM. So thank you so much for your attention. Do you, do you mean change the, the term Mendelian? Right. So 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 basically, the, I mean, we we still can kind. I mean, we we can find you know uh, Mendelian traits in the way uh, you you can observe you know the the, the bimodal distribution and the good segregation. But at the same time, that's a starting point, and then you, you can see the continuum, right, of, of this effect of, you know, monogenic mutation. I mean, I mean, you should make the difference between, you know, monogenic mutation and... Um, Let's go ahead. Um, more so you showed that for the Mandalian trait, you show there is this hidden uh, 
complexity in 5% of your class. So I was wondering whether this has to do with the different natural isolate that you are using, like maybe some isolates are more divergent than your uh, lab strain, so they have more genes that underlying this trait. So have you looked at uh, the strains that show this high comp complexity and you uh, look at the divergence from the lab strain? I mean, I mean, there's no direct uh, correlation between the fact that we do observe uh, 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 a deviation from uh, the Mendelian inheritance and, and, and the fact that they are really divergent. I mean, it depends on, you know, the combination of uh, alleles you're going to get in your background, and it's not really related to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you.